Oh, what's going on? Morning. Morning, everybody. Don't know where I'm looking. We're going back to a uh, subscriber's house today. We did a test there the other day. Well, the other day, a couple of weeks ago now. We're going back, the TV room's getting done, so we need to go and put a socket in, get a point in for the underfloor heating, and um, um, a point for the thermostat where that's gonna go. I think he's got a couple of garage lights for us to put up. I picked up some um, some bits the other day, some fire retardant glands, these are the ones, people ask what I use. These are the ones that I use for the fuse boards, yeah. I picked up some more um, whisker, uh, whisker, um, Wago boxes. These are for the 222s and I love these little whisker boxes. The 206 whisker box. I got some of these in black and I picked up some in a sort of white off grey as well. So let's go get James. Let's see if he's had a good Easter. If he's had any many Easter eggs and then we'll go and crack on. Careful in there, mate. It's nice and clean. Yeah. Let's be careful, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> I've not cleaned the van out. I said I was and I've been so busy. I've been so busy. I've been so busy. You're gonna have to walk, mate. Where is he? Where is he? Is he what's he got in the back? Where's he got in the back of the van? Oh, where's he gone? <laughs> what's he doing? <laughs> I thought he was getting me like an Easter egg or something. No? Oh, you can't get in, mate. You're gonna have to walk, is that all right? Yeah. It's only in Evesham. It's like a 10 minute walk. It's 10 minutes, 10 minutes, yeah. Chuck that in the back, mate. Um, and on the last one, what, what's, what have you broke already? Hoover. <laughs> no. Not the new Hoover. Really? Is it the new Hoover? No. Oh, that's what. Can you put them two in there, mate, as well? Yeah. Thank you. Right, yeah, we're going back to Evesham. I need to ask James, what socks have you got on? Pardon? What socks have you got on? Oh. The most important question. Look at that. Oh. Yes. Let's go and get a coffee and then we're going to get on the road. <laughs> They're better, aren't they? Yeah. If you're liking them. Yeah. Great. Well, you're going to hoover that up. We've got to put a socket here for a TV. And this is an horrible corrugated. If you know these wars, they're like an horrible corrugated cardboardy type wall like this so we've got to get into this wall we've got a cable here look someone has kindly put in goes to a socket i've just checked goes to a socket in the living room so we're gonna to have to we're gonna reuse this but we're gonna pull it back we're gonna put a spur here come back down or along if we can whatever we can do um, um it does a socket back entry so we have to re refeed that socket and then we have to come up to this socket um up here somehow so we've got to do that we've also got to add in a socket here back entry in the office put a spur and then we're going to put a thermostat up here for the underfloor heating and then we've got to do some garage lighting but we'll get into this first right james has gone and isolated this we've just proven dead with this and then we'll take co cover off prove dead with our uh, continuity tester probe and we'll lock off i'll get james to do that and then um, you've just cut in a little, uh, which is lasered round. We're going to cut one in there. As I said, a spur and a socket there. Yeah, we need to lock that off, mate. Yes. You need to get the lock off kit, which is in the tester bag. Please. Yes. And then put a little, one of those little tiny lock offs on it, yeah? Yes. And then I'll come and have a look. So I'll just show you the construction of this ward. It's like a, it's like a cardboard sort of. It's a sandwich between two bits of plasterboard. There's the other bit of board. Look, probably what, 50 mil thick? That's all it is. And you can shove a rod through and get to break through these. So that's what we're gonna have to do. Right, there we go, locked off. Okay, yep. Um, someone did say you've sealed the gas pipe in the um, cavity. There's no cavity here, look. Yeah, this is the meter box, that's it. So there's no cavity. So I haven't sealed any gas pipe in a cavity here. <laughs> anyway, that's that's fine. Right, we're locked off. We're now going to go and prove dead. So, James, how are you going to do that then? Do this first. Yep. 
Yep, you've proved the tester. You're now going to go between line and neutral. Nothing. Nothing. Earth and you're pushing down on them probes, yeah? Yeah. Yep. And then you prove back the tester, mate. Lovely. Perfect. All right, James is going around changing the sockets for white MK. Uh, clients, white, white MK. Should we put some back, back box flies on there as well? Is there a lug? There is one. Yep. There, yeah. I'll go and get you some cable. I'll go and get it. And I've only gone and cut that in the wrong place, James. Look. Gone above oh, the God, yeah. I've gone above the TV line, look. Look at that. Oh, no. oh well. Nah, it's joking. It's going up. It's going up. TV's going to go up to here, so it's going to cover. So that's fine. I was joking. Well, I managed to get my cable in this wall. On this, on this look, end, you end up with a little gap next to the wood. So I managed to fish all the way down to the bottom, which is nice. I have disconnected. Um, ouch. This cable is getting ripped up, by the way. So... We are trying our best to not do damage, but uh, the client's not bothered, okay. And then this cable here goes to the socket I've just disconnected next door. So we need to use this as our feed. Oh, God. He says, bloody hell, look at that. What is wrong with that? What's going on with that? Uh, it's hooked in the box. That's why. That's why it won't come out. There we go. Tell you what I'll do. I'll get this box. I can get this one out if we can. No, anyway. I'll pull that in and then I'll push a new one down. that's out probably just trip the rcd off all right so that one will go to our spur we'll then come from our spur to this socket and then that cable there will loop to that one so these two sockets will be controlled by a um 13 amp spur because it's already been spurred off yeah so we don't want to put two spurs off the ring we just have one uh, to the spur and then the spur 13 amp fuse is, con is controlling the two sockets all right, James is continuing to swap the sockets for me. Top man. Um, managed to get my socket down, obviously inside the wall. This isn't a path, this isn't a cavity wall as such, so I'm happy to use plasterboard boxes in here because it'd be a nightmare trying to fix with wood in here. It's just corrugated cardboard. Um, obviously, I've pulled my feed back to here, wired down to that one, and then back up to that one, just to save a bit of cable. And then technically, this isn't a zone, but as you can see, we've got heating pipes already here so i've managed to drill and go above and then the skirting board's going to get stuck on um so what i'll do on the test sheet is on the minor works i'll put a note on it just to say that the cables run behind the skirting board that was the only accessible route the client knows and the client is actually putting the skirting board on himself okay so you know look it's got heating cables heating and cables just here so uh, I'm happy I'm happy with that. So I'll put a note on the test sheet just to say that they do run behind the skirting board, okay? So I'm just making off this socket. Um, I'm seeing some chatter recently about how you shouldn't double cables over. Um, when I did my AM2, if you didn't double these over, you would have failed. So single cable, you double over to increase the cross-sectional area, yeah? Otherwise, if you just put a little one mil in there, chance of it pulling off are quite high, yeah? I get asked this all the time. These mats are from Paul at PRS Supplies, okay? Go and have a look. He's got a great Instagram page and he's got a great website. Paul at PRS Supplies. Right, our um, switch spur is in now, which is controlling one, two sockets back entry. We're going to clean up, do an end-to-end -end at this socket. We know we've got ring cons now because we've already done some testing here. We'll do it again. Then we can do some earth loops, RCDs at these. And then we just got to cut a socket in there. Um get a cable up over to the thermostat and then a copex from the thermostat down ready for the underfloor heating mat probe to be pushed up it yeah this is great because it runs off a battery now james hasn't got any excuse why well, he can't hoover up now if the power's not on <laughs> 
Right, so we're working our way round. I'm here now. I'm going to go for a double socket and a single. This is dot and dab, so we're going to have to try and fish up this wall in places there's going to be a bit of a dab, so we might have to cut a hole. We will put the patches back in and make good. This floor has been up above. We can come round and then drop down to the thermostat point. It's just going here somewhere yet. Yeah. Um, there's a socket back entry, which I'll take my feed for this new socket and this uh, spur here. Is that just pulled off? Yeah. <laughs> right, bedroom above. This wall is pretty much identical to where the wall is downstairs. So if you imagine downstairs, this is where I'm chasing those uh, boxes in. So I've pushed my rods up. It should be under this floor, allegedly. All right, floor's up. There's a wall. I can see this satin joist on the wall. James? Can you push those rods up and down, mate? Because that's actually behind the dab there, so that should. If you need to put another one on, mate, just put one on. Put another red one on. If you need to, yeah. What you'll have to do is pull them out of the wall a little bit. And then back up, yeah? Let's have a look. It's over here. It's over here somewhere, I think. I reckon. Yeah. It's going to get through there then. Oh, that must be the client's speaker. So yeah, we should be here somewhere. Go in. Yeah, that's it. Push. That's it, mate. Bloody hell. Right, how much you got on the rod? Push it up then. Woo! -woo. Good man. Top man. Safe chasing up that wall now. We just got to get down that wall now. Da -da -da -da. Right, James, are you ready? Are you ready for love? Yes, I am. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm going to take him off as I go. One handed, of course. One, two. And there she blows. Right, full enough. Okay, well, we'll put one mil in for this. This is just a thermostat for the underfloor heating mat. And then it'll go on a three or five amp fuse, depending on the wattage of the mat, yeah? That'll be it, mate. If you cut him off, leave about 18 inches. Remember, James? Remember, it's going to that single box. It's going across to the single, yeah? I was just, James is just there. I've locked him out of the room. Um, this is one of the reasons I don't run a saw down there because the plumber has put his pipes right tight to that. So if you were to run a saw through that, you'd probably nick the top of those pipes off, look. So I just break the tongue off with a, with a, um, you know, with that basically. Hear that? That's the pipes. Today, James is mostly being a carpenter and a floor layer. Well, we had to take this door off because this board runs under. Uh, stops there, you see. So I couldn't lift that up with a the door there because it just hit that board. So we've taken the door off. That'll give us our route down to the thermostat, which is down here. Where's the wall? Ah, oh, there's the wall. See it now. I can't see the rods yet. Get me the tape measure, please, mate. Please. Uh, 
So this wall is staggered. Do, 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 do. There's half a skip up here. You got the tape? Definitely there, mate. Right, put a bit off for me and lock it down. That's it. So it's going to go under there. And there where that wall is. It's literally there. So it's roughly from that bit of wood, 18 inches in under the floor. I'm ready, mate. Are you ready? Go for it. Hold on, hold on. Yeah, go on. Hold on. Go on. Go on, James. James, don't break me rods. Don't break me rods. How lucky is that, eh? Just take the loop, mate, when you're ready. I've caught one, James. What's that? Fish. Yeah. It's quite a big one. Go on. Go on. Stop there, mate. Lovey. Lovey, lovey. Well, this is the socket we are coming off back entry. So we're going to just take that knockout out. Grommet, drill, and then I'm going to have to split the split them here because I want to keep this on the ring final rather than just spurring off because we are powering a socket and a switched fuse spur. It's not bad, you say? Could it be better, James? Let's have a look. What's he? Oh, what? <laughs> yeah, that could be a bit better than that, James, couldn't it? <laughs> Alright, we'll get this. We'll give this a little fill now, and it'll be alright. We'll go do something else, then second fix this. Second fix this after. Yeah, it's alright now. Right, garage. We've got one existing light. We've got to put one up here with a surf with a, a sealer mount PIR. Luckily, this side we got loft. That side we haven't, so we're not going to do that side today. I don't think we're going to get it done. So we're taking that light down, three lights along here, and then eventually we'll probably come back. Uh, one, two in this area, and then one in here. You can see I've got the laser up. Obviously, steps are in the way. We're going to fire these two up the same. We'll come back and put that one up another time, as I say. But we've found centre. We've got centre of the garage. We're just going to wang the three up. And then the client's gone and got himself an emergency fitting, which is good because we're going to put it in line with this fuse board. So if this does lose power, we've got emergency back up so you can see the fuse board. Do a little bit of wiring. Right, one, light is up. Old light is down. We're going to put this one back this way, cover up the existing cables. They can stay in this light fitting because we're going to need a permanent feed um, here. So basically that um, cable will become a permanent feed because it's switched via this switch at the minute here so that can be a sort of a kill switch actually it can't no it can't be can it because if he switches that off it's going to kill the emergency feed uh, okay i'll sort that in a minute anyway got a second light up third light um pir's going here somewhere as i said uh flush one i'll jump in the loft do some wiring and then we'll compare the two sides so these are the same lights knightsbridge but the only difference is we've got a battery back up, which we plug in once we're finished. And then this is emergency driver that controls the little lamp and then just like switching over onto battery mode when power loss. Yeah, it does, does all the switch. And then when the power comes back on, it switches back on and then goes back to switching the light on and off. Right at the minute, we've literally pulled a loop and we've clipped it between the three lights. Okay, that'll be our switch line and neutral. There's the hole, the PIR is going to go there. I want to keep it away from the camera and this light. So it's going to go there. It'll pick you up 
wherever you come from. So we're gonna wire a permanent feed, which is actually gonna be our switch feed up here to here. This will then switch the lights on, but it will go via the PIR. So it's sort of PIR will be in line of the switch. So that switch there will kill the feed to this. And there's another cable up there, which does that light, which we'll leave in for now. What we're gonna to have to do then is take a feed from the board and put it into this light to give this light the emergency backup because if we turn that switch off it will kill the feed to the PR which will then kill the feed to the, um, the emergency backup and the light will keep coming on so we don't want that we're gonna have to pull a permanent feed from the board I'm not sure he's done a wee wire here at some point but or added on but it's quite rough it's quite rough actually the cable just run everywhere to the board but we're clipping ours, clipping ours along the underside here. Yeah, that's to the light. Goes along, to along. So the PIR there. Right, we got a kill switch there. Put him on. Puts the feed back onto the PIR. And then um, if we come out of the way, this will go off. I don't know what it's even set at, factory setting. Um, but yeah, nice and bright, look. Right, there we go, we've still got the two-way, which is a kill switch effectively. James can walk to the PIR to test it. There we go, three lights on, switches this one on now. I had a bit of a blonde moment, I connected this one into the uh, the switch line rather than the, the um, PIR switch line, so it wouldn't go off. But now I've done it correctly, so he's switching off. The timer needs to go up, obviously. Um, there we go, ching ching. But yeah, comparison to that side, to this side a lot different. Day two, what the hell is going on? Look, it's April, isn't it? My good friends at Milwaukee has sent us some bits. Um, sent me a load of gloves and some of these bits, so we're gonna give these to James. So we need to hide them. Not under there with my old dinner from yesterday. But we need to hide them under there. And then have a nice, Little surprise, wasn't it? Oh, there we go. We hide them under there for James. He can have a little surprise. <laughs> you can't get in the warm van, mate. No. I've put the ladder of death in. <laughs> it's in the back. Yeah, we got to go and do some um, high bay lights. They're only four and a half, four and a half meters, but. Um, we tried it the other day and we couldn't do it. So we've got another ladder. I've actually bought this one. Um, it's an A-frame type thing. So James has got the reach, so he's gonna go up there later. We'll try and get a picture of that. And under there, James, there's some goodies for you under there, mate. Yeah. Yeah, there's some little goodies sent to you Ooh. by Milwaukee, yeah? Thank you. That's nice, isn't it? It is very nice. Some new gloves, but we did say that I get the new stuff yesterday <laughs> and you get the old stuff. <laughs> All right, let's go. Here we are, James, cupboard of love. So, we've just gone round and done a load of unplugging. There, look at this. Look at this beauty. Yeah, what a beauty. Yeah, I'm, I'm intrigued to get this cover off, actually. There's a couple of bits we've already noticed. Well, I've noticed. Every cable <laughs> seems to be, um, I don't know. Obviously, it's flexed, so it doesn't concern me because it's not fixed wiring, but it's just, look at that. What's... <laughs> <laughs> a bit one mil <laughs> that needs to be upgraded but that's fine we're going to get into it um there's not that many circuits in here to be fair so what we'll do we'll whip this cover off and then we'll have a quick look <sighs> right we've got pme 60 amp fuse um as you can see straight away we've got that sort of twin and earth again with a exposed um earth earthing conductor that must run up inside the building, don't know where it goes, okay? Um, right. James has gone to grab my cup of tea from the van. So what I'll do now is I'll whip this cover off and we'll have a look. Absolutely lovely. It's actually really neat and tidy. It's just, obviously, it's old, basically. So we're going to get into this, test this all out. There's tons of USB sockets everywhere. So I'm not going to be able to do my, unless I go and disconnect them all, but I'm not here to disconnect all the sockets. So I'm just not going to do 
um, 500 volts between line and neutral. We just do do them together, yeah. Um, but yeah, that's it. We'll get into it. That's that twin and earth coming in um, unprotected, but I can't do anything with that. Uh, so that, that'd be a C3 straight away. There's a bit of bonding. Um, it's just old, but yeah, it doesn't look too bad. All right, James is going around just identifying bits. There's the main gas bond that's also got a T, so that's incorrect. So it should have at least two on here, and that's definitely undersized, okay? It's less than 50% of the main um, earthing conductor. And then I'm just looking for the water and come into the kitchen. And you see a little bond there. It's got a Jubilee clip. It's got a Jubilee clip. And then it goes up there. <laughs> it goes, goes to the socket. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. James, what is going on? Bonds lately, aren't they? So they're all on that one circuit. Yep. Uh, yep. Do, 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 do. They fit the flat plate to an old cooker switch and it won't fit, but then I reckon they've wired some sort of power out of there, look. And there's not even an earth in there by the looks of it. There's no earth. Oh. <laughs> Unsatisfactory. Yeah. So that's still on. Yeah. So that's powered from the cooker then. And they've taken the earth. Oh, I see what they've done now. Because this, because that has only got two cores in it. They've cut the earth out. They're taking the earth off of the water pipe to power the socket. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Very nice. It's nice like that. It's a good photo. Right. We had to have a look in here, didn't we? Obviously. So look at that. That's very lucky, isn't it? Um, so we got six mil, this is all off by the way. We got six mil coming in here. They then put some 15 amp connector blocks, a bit of 2.5 to the oven to go onto that socket. They then come off the bottom of it with a new bit of cable. There is actually an earth in there. So that earth must be earth in the water pipe, like we thought. Um, but then obviously this doesn't fit back at all. It's just, yeah. Um, complete another dog's doo doo. Look, look at that neutral hanging out, live obviously hanging out, connector blocks. And this is, believe it or not, on a 50 amp MCB or yeah, 50 amp. All right, so making sense now. We're trying to do an R1, R2 on the incoming supply, and we haven't got any continuity. But the only way that this circuit is getting an earth CPC is off of the water pipe. That's why they've put that cable in. That's why they've put that cable in under there, through that socket. It's then feeding through that socket back up to this point and earthing that system that way. So no continuity on the CPC on this circuit. Well, I've just linked out of the board between live and neutral. And as you can see, I'm getting a read in there. So this CPC is broken somewhere, okay, on that circuit. We're just doing a temporary fix on this um, oven supply. So we've got the massive 221s. They're the massive ones that you do. Um, we've got rid of that horrible connectors cut back. Just gonna get this in. Um, it's still not right, but we can't not leave them with the oven tonight, so. So we're back on to this circuit. We're gonna plug in now and have some fun. Yep. Don't be scared, James. There you go. What does that mean? It really won't test. We haven't got good enough earth there for it to test. Yeah? Yeah. No. Nope. Okay. Right, as the board is completely rammed and I can't I can't identify where the CPCs are, I'm gonna do some end-to-end -end readings at a socket. Um it's the only way I can do it to actually get some readings. Um but I'm not confident that we're gonna get any readings anyway. Metal socket. Oy, oy, oy. I don't know what we've got going on here. I've not a clue. It looks like one mil cable to me. So now I'm going to have to undo this. Or or not. I don't know. I'm, I'm going to put this one back. 
it's just not, look at it. Oh, I don't know, it's just horrible. All right, I don't know what they've done here. Well, same room, same room, and this one's been on a <laughs> roller coaster. Can you twist them cables anymore? Look at that neutral though, look. Look, can I move that, James? Look at that neutral, see it? Yeah. The neutral isn't doing anything, look. Look, that is shockingly bad, isn't it? Come on, let's be honest. Life is a roller coaster, just gotta ride it. <laughs> Battery's getting caned today, so look, luckily you've got this little power bank. Right, we've managed to undo the roller coaster of love. Plenty of length on them, so I'm, I'm a bit perplexed to why they kind of did that. Anyway, looks like we've got two standard and then someone's spurred off here. So we've got nothing on that one. I don't believe that reading, do you? 0.02. Hmm. Something smells fishy, James. And it is not me, mate. It's not. It's not you either. It's not me. Hmm. That doesn't sound right to me. Doesn't look right either. What's going on? Hmm. Look. We've got a ring. What have we got here? What about that one and that one? Yeah, I don't know what's going on here, boy. We're gonna have to solve the puzzle, James. That's open circuit. And that, on neutrals, open circuit, don't know. Don't know. So Turkey two, Turkish? Turkish two. Turkish two. The two circuits we've ever tested have failed. We've got to do that boiler. James is just doing some visuals on some lights, and then that's what we've got, look. Everything is hanging out of the light, look. That's nice and original, look. That has not been touched, so if they're all like this, it, it would be okay, but fortunately, they're not. Right, next circuit, we've got boiler flex, suspect flex, again, original. They've come off the load side, so whatever that fuse is, and if you follow that flex, he goes down, out, goes to an outside light, so the boiler circuit is doing the boiler plus an outside light. So I've just looked at that, it is a three amp fuse, but it's just things like that, look, just smash the knot in the bottom and then wedge the flex in like that, look. Get all these down, James. Right. <sighs> yep. No. It's no me. trip. Yep. Uh, Are you going to do it? You want the crock on that earth, don't you? And then the two probes. We just tried to conduct uh, a ZS down on the downstairs lighting circuit, and my tester said E F L T was it? E F L T, yes. which means that earth fault loop is exceeding. Basically, the high resistance on the um, the earth there. So we're going to just hope we can get an earth reading, a reading off of here, a ZS. I thought I'd get it on camera because it might bring up a might bring up the same fault. Hang him down and clip him so he's got yeah natural hang. That's it. Yep. Watch your football, mate. On your head, James. Go underneath. That's it. No, go on. The, the red one's in the middle, yeah. and then we do the switch line after. Red one's in the middle, that's him. And then outer, neutral. Right, ready? Yes. Don't move. 1.27, I'm shocked. shocked. I'm shocked, mate. Right. Woo, there we go. So, we've spoken to the client. I think we've got about 25 items on the list. Obviously, it's a failure, it's unsatisfactory. Um, there's a few bad things there, actually. Um, he did say he was getting a knock off of the dishwasher. <laughs> that isn't a shock considering there's no CPC um, on that circuit. And then he he added in the water, he added in the bond from the water just to give it an earth. But that
that also powers some power down to the shed, you know, it's quite dangerous, isn't it? Um, so we're sort of discussing a rewire maybe, we're not sure yet, we'll send in the report and um, let them make, make the decision, but I said the amount of time we'd be there fault finding and trying to find, find stuff and that, you may as well pay for a rewire and get it done anyway, so... Anyway, let's go to the next one. James or me is going up the death ladder. 